Maxwell Chikambutso has never been one to shy away from challenging convention, and his creation, a self-powered aircraft, is living proof of that indomitable vision. I had heard the rumors, the speculative conversations among pilots and engineers about this mysterious machine that could take to the skies without a drop of fuel or the roar of a combustion engine. But hearing stories is one thing. Standing face to face with this futuristic marvel was something else entirely. The moment I approached it, I was struck not just by its sleek, aerodynamic design, but by the absolute serenity that surrounded it. There was no engine rumble, no scent of jet fuel, no vibrations rattling the air, only a poised, quiet presence, as if it were waiting for the sky to summon it. The aircraft looked like something delivered from a time yet to come, sent backward to challenge our current understanding of aviation. I've spent over two decades in the cockpit, piloting everything from open cockpit biplanes to intercontinental commercial jets, and I thought I'd experienced every emotion flight could stir. But this was new. This machine wasn't designed just to fly. It was designed to redefine flight itself. My name is David Moyo, and this is the story of how I became part of something revolutionary. During the pre-flight briefing, I noticed immediately that this wasn't going to be a typical checklist run. Instead of checking fuel balances and engine oil, we were reviewing electromagnetic field strengths and the charge levels of what they called a self-replenishing energy system. My co-pilot, traditionally a human, had been replaced with a fully AI-driven stability assistant, embedded into the aircraft's neural control architecture. The system didn't just help fly the plane, it lived in symbiosis with it. As I strapped into the cockpit, the seat seemed to mold around me like memory foam with a brain. The instrument panel illuminated with dynamic readouts and metrics I had never encountered before, giving off a faint glow like bioluminescent skin. Everything about this machine radiated innovation. The runway ahead shimmered in the morning haze as I took a deep breath and initiated the sequence for what was being touted as a historic speed challenge. We weren't just aiming to hit numbers. We were looking to break through the perceived ceiling of electric-powered aircraft performance and do it with elegance, stability, and sustainability. The ground crew gave me the signal, and I activated the primary drive system. Instead of a scream, the aircraft responded with a gentle hum, more like a resonance of tuned energy than machinery. It felt as if the craft was singing, harmonizing with unseen forces. We accelerated rapidly, but it didn't feel like traditional propulsion. There was no shove only a smooth surge, like being pulled forward by magnetism itself. The takeoff was seamless. The lift felt natural, inevitable, as if the aircraft was rising to meet the sky rather than conquering it. The climb rate exceeded anything I'd previously experienced with electric propulsion systems, but there was no strain, no indication that the aircraft was being pushed to its limits. We were only just getting started. Reaching 10,000 feet. I activated the speed calibration protocol. Instantly, the aircraft responded with a silky surge. Each increase in speed felt controlled, whisper light, yet unrelenting. We hit 240 knots with astonishing stability. The controls were so responsive it felt like the aircraft was reading my thoughts. There was no lag, no mechanical inertia. Every input was met with immediate, intuitive response. By the time we reached 284 knots, I was no longer piloting the plane in the traditional sense I was engaged in a dialogue with it. At 310 knots, a challenging crosswind hit us from the east, the kind that usually makes even experienced pilots tense up. But instead of turbulence, the AI system adjusted control surfaces in real time, effortlessly compensating. I watched in awe as the wings flexed and the rudder shifted with the grace of a bird catching an updraft. We maintained our speed through the crosswind at 312 knots. Unbelievable. In pre-flight simulations, we had only hoped to hit 290. Now, we were flirting with numbers that no electric aircraft had ever reached, and we were doing so with absolute composure. Then I heard the voice of the flight engineer through my headset, David, how does it feel? I couldn't help but laugh. It feels like the sky just gave us permission. As we soared higher, the cabin began to glow faintly, a bluish aura of ionized air forming around us evidence of the energy system interacting with atmospheric particles. We had entered a zone of flight I didn't know existed. 328 knots and climbing, still no energy drain, still no sign of fatigue in the systems. After more than 15 minutes at high-speed cruise, 
power metrics held firm above 97% integrity. No signs of wear, no overheating. Even as I initiated the return loop, banking smoothly, the aircraft responded with balletic grace. There were no G-force shocks, just flowing transitions. It became clear to me, I wasn't flying this machine, I was in communion with it. It anticipated my movements like a dance partner who had memorized my every step. We landed with the kind of precision that felt surreal. The aircraft almost didn't want to stop. As we taxied to a halt, a wave of applause broke out. The ground crew had witnessed something they would talk about for decades. The engineers rushed forward to collect the flood of data. I stepped down onto the tarmac, energized like I hadn't felt in years. The flight wasn't just successful, it was a paradigm shift. Maxwell, standing near the runway with his arms folded, nodded. When I shook his hand and congratulated him, he smiled and replied, No. Congratulations to you. You just piloted the future. And he was right. That night, I couldn't sleep. My mind kept replaying every moment, not just the numbers or the feel of the controls, but the harmony, the feeling that the aircraft wasn't just flying, it was part of the sky. It didn't resist gravity, it worked with it. It danced through physics like a poet bending language. Reviewing the telemetry later confirmed what I already knew, we'd achieved sustained flight at over 320 knots for 23 minutes with zero performance degradation. The AI algorithms had compensated for every environmental variable, not just reacting, but predicting. The aircraft wasn't just smart, it was aware, in its own synthetic way. The footage hit the internet the next morning, and the reaction was immediate. Some called it a hoax. Others labeled it the beginning of the next aviation revolution. But the flight data, verified by third-party observers, was indisputable. This had happened. It was real. Maxwell called a meeting the next day. What would you do next, he asked me. I didn't hesitate. Push it farther. He grinned. And so began the next phase, a second test, this time for extended high-speed performance under dynamic atmospheric conditions. I was the first to volunteer. Something had shifted inside me. I wasn't flying out of obligation anymore. I was chasing something, something beautiful. Maxwell's engineers spent the next few days feeding our AI system with all available data, improving its anticipatory logic, giving it a name, ARA. Short for Adaptive Reactive Reasoning Assistant. Naming it, Maxwell believed, would humanize the interaction. And it did. On test day two, I arrived before dawn. The aircraft gleamed under a golden sky. There was familiarity between us now. I knew its rhythms, its voice. Ara greeted me in a calm synthesized tone as I entered the cockpit, Welcome back, Captain Moyo. Systems nominal. We took off again in silence, climbing smoothly to 12,000 feet. This time we entered a known turbulence corridor early, where sudden pressure shifts often cause discomfort even in commercial airliners. But Ara adapted in real time, flexing wing geometry, shifting vector angles with zero lag. I was flying a machine that breathed with the atmosphere. We passed 300 knots again, barely noticing. At one point, Ara warned of a thermal pocket. We adjusted course milliseconds before impact and sliced through it like it wasn't even there. We climbed to 16,000 feet. I saw the curvature of Earth. Initiating spiral maneuvers, I released control entirely. Ira handled it like a veteran pilot, maintaining perfect rotational balance. We simulated what Maxwell called hyperloop acceleration, approaching near supersonic speeds without breaching the sound barrier. At 345 knots, the aircraft remained whisper quiet. No stress. No noise. Just pure, unfiltered motion. The return was elegant, the landing exact. Another record. Another quiet celebration. Then Maxwell dropped the real challenge. A direct race between our aircraft and a top-tier combustion-powered sport jet, flown by a seasoned ex-military ace. The goal was audacious, proved that sustainability could outperform brute combustion in speed, control, and agility. The event drew global attention. On race day, the contrast was poetic. 
Our machine whispered to life, there's thundered with power. We launched together. At 290 knots we were neck and neck. At 310, their jet began to strain. We did not. Ara anticipated and adapted. By the final turn, we edged ahead and crossed the finish line first by just under two seconds. A self-powered aircraft had defeated combustion, not through aggression, but intelligence. That night, the aviation world changed. FAA inquiries began. Investors flooded in. Maxwell stayed calm. This isn't about sales, he said. It's about setting a new standard. He meant every word. Plans for new variants began vertical takeoff, city-to-city -city models, stratospheric prototypes. This wasn't just the birth of a new aircraft. It was the genesis of a movement. I had flown faster machines, louder machines, but never one so alive. Maxwell hadn't just given us a new vehicle. He had rewritten our relationship with flight. The sky is no longer a limit. It's the beginning. And I was lucky enough to be the first to chase it, and now, to live it.